Thank you for visiting my channel. I am the Actuarial Guy. Please subscribe to receive the latest videos from my channel. In today's session, we'll be looking at Unit 4, which deals with the real and money interest rates. Our main objective will be to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of real and money interest rates. Let me give you a bit of background information. Inflation is defined as the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. It is calculated as an annual percentage. As inflation rises, every dollar will buy a smaller percentage of a good. For example, given an inflation rate of 2%, a $1 pack of gum will cost $1.02 in a year's time. Alright, now back to our lesson plan. Accumulating an investment of C for a period of time T produces an accumulated value of C multiplied by the accumulation factor from time zero to time T. If we consider C to be an amount of money in a particular currency, for example, shillings or pounds or dollars, and we are also aware of the period of investment as well as the cash amount accumulated at the end of the investment period, then the underlying rate of interest that gives us this amount, C multiplied by the accumulation factor, is called the money rate of interest. More generally, given any series of monetary payments accumulated over a period, a money rate of interest is that rate which will have been earned so as to produce the total amount of cash in hand at the end of the period of accumulation. In practice, most such accumulations will take place in economies subject to inflation, where a given sum of money in the future will have less purchasing power than at the present day. It is often useful, therefore, to reconsider what the accumulated value is worth, allowing for the eroding effects of inflation. Now I need you to remember that inflation has the effect of increasing the prices of goods and services. It also has the effect of increasing the accumulated value of the amount invested. So, returning to our initial example, now supposing that, the accum that uh, accumulation takes place in an economy subject to inflation, so that our initial amount of cash, C, is actually accumulated to this amount at the end of the period of investment but due to inflation it is actually only worth this so this is the accumulated value at the end of the investment but when we remove the effects of inflation we actually end up with this amount here so, in this case, this amount is higher than this. This amount is greater than this. So, the rate that produces this amount is higher than the rate that would produce this amount. So, in this case, the rate of interest at which the original sum of C would have to be accumulated to produce this amount is lower than the money rate of interest. Remember that the money rate of interest 
produces this amount here. Now this sum here is referred to as the real amount accumulated. And the underlying interest rate reduced for the effects of inflation is termed a real rate of interest. This amount is the real amount accumulated and it is produced when you accumulate this amount C under the real rate of interest. Accumulating C under the real rate of interest gives you the real accumulated amount while under the money rate of interest you end up with this. In this case this amount is less than oh uh, the money the amount under the money rate of interest is actually greater than the real accumulated amount and you get the real accumulated amount when you adjust the amount that is uh, found under the money rate of interest when you adjust it for the effects of inflation now generally speaking Given any series of monetary payments accumulated over a period, a real rate of interest is that rate which will have been earned so as to produce the total amount of cash in hand at the end of the period of accumulation reduced for the effects of inflation. Now in unit 11 of this subject we are going to describe ways of calculating real rates of interest given the money rates of interest and vice versa. Up to this point we have considered inflation to be positive. Now in a case where inflation is negative it is actually called deflation. And in this case the same theory we've looked at still applies. And in this case, you will find that the real rate of interest is actually higher than the money rate of interest. And as you might expect, when there is no inflation, both the real rate of interest and the money rate of interest are actually equal. Actually, Actuaries work with both rates depending on the nature of data provided. When doing this, they consider two main factors. The first factor is the purpose to which the rate will be put, while the second one is whether the underlying data has or has not been adjusted for inflation.